before a peatland is selected as an extraction site. Many things must be considered. First, it must contain enough commercial quality peat to warrant investment. In practice, less than 20% of peatlands are suitable for commercial peat extraction. If a peatland is found to be suitable, the operators must get approval from the authorities before moving forward. Strict environmental regulations are in place in most countries. And in many countries, a large number of peatlands have been set aside for conservation and would never be considered for development. Before peat extraction is approved in most countries, an environmental review is conducted. If there are concerns by individuals in the community, a public hearing is held, giving both sides an opportunity to be heard. In most countries, the authorities have the power to demand an environmental impact study. Only after all the required steps have been taken can a peat extraction license be granted. The two most common means of extracting peat are the milled and the sod peat methods. In both of these methods, the water table of the peatland is lowered by digging a series of drainage ditches. This reduces the moisture content of the peat and in doing so makes the ground firm enough to operate the necessary equipment. A third means of extracting is the wet mining method, which is common in France. The most efficient of these extraction techniques is the milling method. In the milled peat method, the peat is loosened and left on the fields to dry. The length of each drying cycle depends on the sun, wind and humidity. It can take as little as a few hours to dry when conditions are perfect, or up to a few days to dry if it is cloudy and wet. Before the peat can be harvested, the moisture content must be reduced from about 85% down to about 40 or 50%. When the peat is dry enough, a vacuum or mechanical harvester, unique to the peat industry, picks it up and dumps it in stockpiles on the edges of the peat field. Peat extraction typically takes place between May and September, but the length of the season can vary depending on local climatic conditions. The sod peat extraction method is less common because it is more expensive. There are certain end uses, though, for which sod peat is more suited, whether it's for fuel or for horticulture. In the sod peat method, peat is cut into blocks which are stacked on the field to dry. It can take as little as two weeks or as long as several months to dry. Once dry, the peat is transported by rail cars or tractor pull trailers to stockpiles or to a plant for processing. The water that is drained from a peat extraction site must be clean enough that it does not impact the downstream water system. To ensure this, most peat extracting countries have strict regulations governing the percent of allowable particles. To stay within government guidelines, the peat industry is continuously developing new methods of purifying the discharge water. For example, at the Arvinsuo peat extraction site in Finland, the water that is drained from the site is collected in special ponds, where the peat particles settle to the bottom. From those ponds, the water is pumped onto a natural peatland, where it is absorbed through a peat layer and further purified. The peat industry removes only a small layer of peat each year. Depending on the depth of peatland, extraction can continue for several decades. In many peat producing countries there is a code of practice that requires the operator to leave a layer of peat for renaturation or even regeneration purposes or for further use of the site in agriculture or forestry. In some countries, for instance the United Kingdom, Germany and Denmark, peat is extracted from sites that were previously used for agriculture. After peat extraction is finished on these sites, it is possible to re-wet them to wetlands with important nature conservation values. They may eventually develop into a living peat accumulating ecosystem. <laughs>